Hensman. Yes? I'm afraid the taxi's broken down and it's too wet for the trap, so your sister asked me to come and pick you up. And you are? My name is Hurling, Monica Hurling. I'm a friend of Miss Hensman. That's very good of you to help, Miss Hurling. It is Miss. I suppose I'd better find a porter. I've rather a lot of luggage, I'm afraid. I've been travelling for six weeks. It's a small car, Colonel. Ah, well, I'll just bring this small one for the time being. Well, my man here can see to the rest. Welsh, look after Colonel Hensman's luggage. Make sure it gets to the Dower House without delay. Yes, ma'am. This way, Colonel. <laughs> Hey, I think it's stopping. Should I take the fox for a while? No, no, it's mine. It's for Angela. Don't suppose Smoke will have time to skin it anyway? Well, I want it for Christmas. Race you to the hut. First one there till Smoke about the fox. Terrible weather. Isn't it? It's really quite pleasant when I left London. Must remind you of the monsoon. No, not really. Foreign rain isn't quite the same as English rain, is it? Oh, shouldn't we have turned right there? Uh, the road's flooded. Really? I seem to remember it as being all uphill from here. How well did you know my sister, Miss Hurley? I don't remember her mentioning you in her letters. Mm. Well, why have you stopped? Colonel, I do know your sister, but not very well. I'm a reporter from the London Planet, a national newspaper. I think you'd better take me back to the station, Miss Hurling. The name is Hurling, I suppose, or did you lie about that as well? I only want an interview, Colonel. Your sons will be making quite a bit of news, you know. I imagine the taxi will be waiting at the station. My newspaper's offering a reward of 50 pounds for the capture of the boys. Damn it, woman, they're not animals. Well, do I have to get out and walk back? No, of course not. I'm sorry. I suppose you're aware of the latest development, the mighty Caliban. Oh, what? You don't know. Colonel, there's a bear loose in the chase. He escaped from some theatrical group and could be dangerous. Very well, Miss Hurling, you have your interview. I am going to interview you. Now, start at the beginning and tell me everything you know about my boys. Smoko? Smoko? I wonder where he is, John. There's blood. John, look! It's a bad omen. What is? The owl. Something terrible has happened. Smoko must be hurt. I think it wants us to follow it. It's Chip, come on. Smoker? 
Smoko! 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 It's no good, he's out cold. Ugh. Find some rags and a stick. Quick! He's losing a lot of blood. What are you going to do? Put a tourniquet on. We've got to stop the bleeding. Do you know how to? I should do. Robin's practiced on me often enough. We've got to find the pressure point. What's that? Where the main artery crosses the bone. Here. This is it. Press your hand here while I lift the leg. This is the end, you know. How do you mean? Of us. We have to get Smoko to a hospital. And that means giving ourselves up. I wish Rob was here. Well, he's not. So a decision's mine. I'm going for help. At least wait till the storm dies down. It isn't time. You stay here with Smoko. Robin should be back soon. If he wakes up, make him lie very still. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> The lines must be done. Well, we don't need Sergeant Bunting. I can lead you to Smoko's hut. It's out of the question, Padre. I wouldn't dream of asking you to turn out in this weather. If the boys can put up with it, I'm sure I can do too. Very well, then. What are we waiting for? We can pick Jack Bowers up on the way. Now, if the telephone wires are down, the roads may be blocked too. I think you should wait, George. I'm used to very much worse than this, Ellen. Now, don't you worry. Coming, Padre? He's been hurt. I think he's dying. His eyes are open now. But they weren't earlier. Smoko, can you hear me? What's the matter, old chap? It's his leg. Well, why didn't you say so? Looks bad. We found him in here. Something heavy must have fallen on him. John put the tourniquet on. Where is John? He's gone for help. Help? The doctor. I'm going to loosen this tourniquet a bit. You try and get the fire going. It's freezing in here. All right. I found some brandy. Well, you didn't give him any. Not yet. Well, thank heavens for that. He may be hurt inside as well. John's done a good job on this, but it's a bit too tight. The wound has to bleed a little, or he might get gangrene. How long ago did John leave? About half an hour. He'll never make it in this weather. <laughs> Dr. Bower's house in Cherry Warden. Here. You're one of them. Them fugitives, aren't you? Please, you've got to help me. Someone's hurt, you may be dying. I've got to find Dr. Bowers. Here's what I'm taking you to Chesham Tuller Police Station, Nipper. 
There's a 50 quid reward up for you and your brothers. Please. It's a matter of life and death. It'll be your fault if he dies. He's an old man. He's losing a lot of blood. It'll be on your conscience for the rest of your life. If you take me to the police station, you'll get your reward all right. But Smoker will be dead. Fifty pounds for his life. Now just shut up, will you? Brains east off a bit. That hit the right spot. You drink like a man, Miss Hurling. Thank you, Colonel. I'll take that as a compliment. You're right. The lines are down. Quite a homecoming for you, Colonel. I hope you won't be too hard on the boys. They've shown great initiative, you know. You should be proud of them. They've kept us all on the hop for almost six months. Press, police, local community. They should be punished, not praised. They've done nothing but create unpleasantness. I'm very grateful that their mother isn't alive to see all this. Perhaps it's because she wasn't around that they ran away. that you were more interested in the money. Now, just shut up, will you? Because of helping a poor, sick old man. All right, all right, get out. It was a straight cut through the fields to Cherry Walton. Thanks. His eyes are open, uh, but he doesn't seem to see us. I think he's in a coma. Uh, he keeps muttering under his breath. Uh, Do you think he can hear us? I hope John gets through all right. The old boy doesn't look too good. Supporting the doctors out. Hope you don't drive like you drink. Right, we should get separated. We're rendezvous at Sir William's Lodge Gates. Good heavens, is he drunk? Have you gypsies round here? Why, that's no gypsy, Colonel. John! Give us a hand, Bow, he's in a terrible state. Look this way, please. <sighs> please don't die, old man. Please don't die. Someone's coming. Lots of people, by the sound of it. <laughs> If you do that again, young woman, I'll smash your camera. Now, you young ruffian, what have you been up to, eh? It's a very bad hemorrhage. We'd better get him to hospital right away. Who put this tourniquet on? John and I, sir. Where did you learn your first aid? In the scout, sir. You probably saved the old boy's life. Well done. Colonel, you're the man of action here. I think we can rig up a stretcher. We need two... Well, there's an old door outside. Do you think that would do? Show me. Well, if you're right... Wild men of the woods. They'd have died for certain if you hadn't been around. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, that little king Robin. Well, just going to say who we... At this particular moment, that old man's welfare is full of apologies. I wasn't going to apologise. I was just going to tell you why we did it. Can and it'll be dark soon. We should leave at once. Well, we have us to carry the stretcher. We can't carry lanterns as well. <laughs> Good point, Sergeant. Like... Well, Sergeant, here for you, hasn't it? Yes, I reckon so, Vicar. One way or the other. All's well that ends well. Hmm? Yes, well, it uh, didn't end all that well for poor old Smoko, did it? 
And I don't think Sir William was any too pleased about the trespasses on his land. No prosecutions, I trust. No promotion, either man. Ah, oh, but what other policeman in this country has tackled a real lion and flown in an aeroplane? And worn out three pairs of boots. It's taken years off my life, those lads. Oh, thank you for that, Mika. At least I can feel my fingers again. I don't get up. You're very welcome to stay and share my supper with me, Miss Hurling. Now I have to get my story back to London. The London planet. <laughs> Thanks to your newspaper, I fear Cherry Walden will never be quite the same again. Not if I've got anything to do with it. it. Sounds almost like a threat. It's 1925, Vicar. Don't you think it's time that Cherry Walden joined the rest of us in the 20th century? I think those boys have done you all a favour. They didn't do me no favours. Well, I think that Miss Hens was going to regard her nephews in a very different light after she's read Tuesday's edition. I think you're wrong about the boys, Miss Herning. They've given us a taste of the past, not the future. And a good thing, too. Something that we were in grave danger of forgetting. And that was how to accept responsibility in ourselves. And we've become so complacent since the war. I mean, who nowadays has to forage for food or even defend our homes from attack or, or fight for our own lives? Everything is far too easy. The 20th century has a lot to be said for it, but not if it's going to turn us into tame, self-satisfied third-raters. How much of that will be in your newspaper on Tuesday, I wonder, Miss Hurley? Never underestimate the power of the press, Vicar. By the time I finish with them, these boys are going to be greater heroes than Scott of the Antarctic. Our readers are never satisfied without a happy ending. Well, the only satisfaction I shall get is to be thinking of those three smarting backsides up at the Dower House tonight. Alas, I fear Colonel Hensman won't be lenient. <laughs> well, they should go back to school at once, George. They've got almost six months' lessons to catch up on. I've spoken to the headmaster, and he feels the same as I do, that it is not worth their while going back to Banchester for the final two weeks of the term. Well, then I think they should do lessons here. Yes. I'm sure the vicar would help. I don't think you'll find them in a very receptive mood. I feel I'm entirely responsible for what happened. You? Oh, that's ridiculous, Eddie. You appointed me their guardian, and I failed you. What's worse, I failed the boys. Come in. Shut the door. Hmm. Well, that certainly is an improvement. We'll see about your spectacles in the morning, John. And haircuts all round. Yes, Father. Father. Well, before you say anything, I have some news for you. About Smoko? Is he all right? He's going to be fine. He'll be back in the chase by the end of the month, and he's going to receive the 50 pounds for your recapture. I have a suspicion that the Padre pulled some strings. Now, Robin, what were you going to say? We're very sorry, Aunt Ellen, for all the trouble we've caused you. But we thought we were doing you a favor by leaving because we were such a nuisance to you. Well, is that all? No. Well? We loved living in the forest, and we don't regret a second of it. Thank you, Robin. I accept your apology. I'm very relieved you're all back, safe and sound. We thought about you quite a lot, Aunt Ellen. Well, now and then. Did you, John? I'm touched. I had nightmares about you. Harold? <laughs> <laughs> come in, Beatrice, come in. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Miss Hensman, but Dr. Bowers is here. Trouble? On the contrary. We just got back from the hospital. That old man really is quite remarkable. He's already started cursing the nurses for watching him. <laughs> Can we go and see him tomorrow? All in good time, all in good time. This is for you. For all of you, from Smoko. Oh, he's finished. Did he carve that himself? He's done lots more. Does he sell them? And if he doesn't, he should. I've got some more news for you. His nose is coming off. What? We had a specialist in to look at him. He seemed to think it should be quite a simple matter to restore it to its normal size. 
for you. For me? Oh, look, Daddy, he's sweet. He's called Roundtree. He's Harold's, really. But we thought, well, he's a present from all of us. Because you made a mess of your birthday party. And because you tried to help us. He's beautiful. Thank you. You can mess him out if you want. I'll show you. Again, will we? Of course we shall. To visit Smoko. To live, I mean. We'll never sleep in the oak tree again. Out in the wild. Perhaps Father will let us camp out in the chase next summer. But it won't be the same, will it? No. It'll never be the same again. Hey, I think it's snowing. Thank you. 